Hello, I'm Stefan Graeber. I'm the project leader for, for LexD. And today I'm going to be looking into running Windows 11 inside of a LexD virtual machine. This should be a pretty good fit because, as you may know, um, Windows 11 is, is a bit strict as far as requirements. Um, but the main requirements really are running EFI, um, ideally using Secubus, having a TPM and having a modern CPU. And LexD virtual machines support all of that out of the box. There's no no need for like complex configuration or anything to get that. LexD by default is using your EFI, is using Secubus. And adding a TPM to virtual machine is really quite simple. Also, Microsoft recently made um, ISO images available to, to people on their website, so long as you're part of their Windows Insider program that you can easily sign up sign up for. Uh, so this is the, the page on, on their side. If you go down there, then you get to choose your edition. In this case, I think I picked the normal dev channel. Uh, you can confirm and then pick the language. In this case, I picked English and then it gives you a download link here. So I've already downloaded this, so I don't need to go to go through that now. What I can show show you here is what to do afterwards to get yourself a nice Windows 11 install. So switching to a terminal, what we'll need to install in this case is a tool called DistroBuilder. So that's something that the LexD team develops. And because Windows 11 is quite new and not, uh, I mean, not released yet. Uh, you're gonna need the Edge version of DistroBuilder so that it, it supports uh, what's needed for Windows 11 that we have not actually put into a stable release yet. And I forgot you need to pass dash dash classic as well because it is a classic snap package. Okay, so DistroBuilder is now installed. If I go in my downloads directory, you can see I've got here the Windows 11 install ISO. And what this tool builder needs to do is actually repack that ISO. So there is a command, if you look at the help message, called repack windows, and it then takes the ISO and takes a new file name. In this case, let's call it windows11.lexd.iso. And that needs to be run as root. Um, that particular error just mentioned, just says that it failed to use an overlay, which can make things a bit faster for some people. Uh, in my case, I'm using ZFS as my file system on, on this machine, and ZFS is not compatible with using overlays, so it's just using an alternative way of doing things instead. Uh, what this rebuilder is doing now is actually downloading a driver ISO for all of the Vert.io device drivers that LexD uses. So it's downloading that ISO, which is about 200, 200 something megs of drivers. It's then gonna find the window, the right Windows drivers inside that ISO and will inject them inside into the Windows installation ISO. And then there's a few tweaks to um, registry keys and some other stuff so that the installer can actually use that. The result effectively ends up being a new version of the Windows install ISO, which will work seamlessly inside LexD. This, I mean, this, this spot is quite dependent on your internet connection, just how long it's going to take. Um, but usually it's not, it's not too bad. Um, once we get the, the resulting ISO, so yeah, there we go. Just finished downloading. It's now uh, editing the ISO and injecting the different drivers that we need. Uh, once that's done, then we, we can use that as effectively a CD-ROM drive in LexD to then install the um, install Windows 11 from it. That shouldn't take too much longer. It's also worth uh, sometimes going, like, once Windows is installed, going back to those Vertio drivers web page and then download the latest version because sometimes there are, there's a new version that fixes a few a few devices. I think in this case, we're gonna have to do it just to get a slightly newer version of the uh, drivers that supports the graphics cards that's now used by LXT. So anyway, um, we now have a new ISO here. 
that can be used by, by LXD for virtual machine. So in this case, I already have LXD installed um, specifically for, for Windows 11. You're going to need quite a recent version of LXD. Uh, I believe you're going to need at least 4.2 or something along those lines. So the LTS 4.0 point something version of LXD is not going to be sufficient. You're going to want to use uh, a LXD feature release, the current one of those being 4.17. That's what I'm running here. Now, what we need to do here is create a new virtual machine. Um, let's call it Windows VM 11, uh, Win 11. Yeah. Um, it's going to be a virtual machine and it's going to be empty. This command basically creates a new empty disk, does not use an image because we don't have an image. And that's pretty much all it does. Then what we need to do on top of that is grow the file system. Because by default, the, the disk that's provided to newly created virtual machine is going to be 10 gigs. That's not quite enough for Windows. It's going to be unhappy with that. So we need to bump that to uh, 50 gigs. So I'm going to override for Windows 11. The device is called root. And the size is going to be now 50 gig. And it takes just a few seconds to, to get the underlying storage updated. There we go. Uh, the other thing that needs to be done is going to be bumping the CPU a bit because by default you just get one CPU, which technically would work, but that's going to take a while. Uh, and the memory is just one gig by default, which is not enough. So I'm going to be bumping that in this case all the way up to eight gig. So setting that. And then we need to add a TPM because that's one of the new things that Windows is quite keen on having. So I'm going to call the device VTPM because it is a virtual TPM. And then the device type is TPM. And we need to provide a path. The path itself doesn't really matter. It's Windows won't care about that. It's config device add. Yeah. OK, so now there's a TPM attached to it. And the last thing that needs to be done is actually adding the install media itself. So just call it install. It is a disk, and the source is like so. And let's also make it a boot priority so that it will automatically boot from it. Copying device. Keep forgetting some arguments there. We go. So that's adding to Windows 11 a new disk called install. The source is the ISO that this revolver generated, and it sets the boot priority to so that it will boot from that by default. Now that's pretty much it. Uh, the installer normally would start from that. Um, but I can show a small change that, that we did. Um, actually, I just need to just make sure that my system is actually ready for that particular demo. One um, one bit of a pain point we had in the past with folks um, wanting to use virtual machines was how to access the, the VGA console. So there is this parameter called console equals VGA that can be passed, which will automatically attach to the VGA console. The problem is that we can't bundle those client components directly inside the LXD snap. So it was showing a pretty confusing error, and then people had to try and figure out like what to install and what to restart, and that that was not a super great experience. Um, starting effectively this morning, I reworked that logic so that night looks like this. Um, there we go. So it says LXD relies on either remote view or spicy to provide VGA console access. Those can't. Um, those can be bundled with the LXD snap. Uh, and so it needs to be manually installed. So it effectively says that neither of those could be found um, on the system and that you need to install them. But it also says that they will automatically start as soon as they're installed. So I'm just going to be doing that. So I'm going to be installing Remote Viewer, which is coming from the Vert Viewer package, as indicated. And sudo with an O will work better. Second factor, there we go. So now that viewer is installed, and you can't actually see it here um, because I need to actually we can to change the screenshot and it to be able to share that window. Um, let's actually close that window. So I just need to reattach to it. Uh, keep attaching. 
Windows doesn't give you a long, doesn't give you a lot of time to actually boot from the ISO. Okay. All right. Um, so let me just change that window sharing here so that I can share what's popped up on my screen. There we go. That and here. All right. So that's what showed up uh, on, on my screen as I did that uh, first start command. And because I had to redo it, I, I reattached with LXC console instead. So as you can see, that's the Windows installer. I'm just going to be going through some of the next steps. And for anyone who, in, who ever installed Windows before, that shouldn't be uh, very surprising. It's the same old install process. Don't have a product key. I'm going to be installing Windows 11 Pro. Whenever just doing a test with Windows, I always pick the Pro Edition because it does support RDP, uh, which then lets you have a better remote usage experience later on. Uh, oops, yeah. Click the wrong option and they don't just let you <laughs> quickly go back here to actually redo some of the process. Okay. All right, standard service is fine. Next. There we go. Install Windows. The drive we can see is probably probably 50 gig as was configured earlier. So let's go and install. And now is the potentially long part of waiting for everything to get installed. It, having done it before, it actually gets through the first part of the install pretty quickly. Uh, it's just that after that, it goes into the um, the first user setup, and that part takes quite a while. And then it goes into um, a update, like a forced update step, which also takes quite a while. I'm just gonna give that uh, a minute to to do its thing. And so, and once you get something like that installed, one thing you can do with Flexi to make the experience nicer moving forward would be to run sysprep, which is what you use for creating Windows images, running sysprep as the administrator on the installed system, uh, then shutting down the VM and publishing that as an image or just keeping it around as like a template instance. From that, you can easily copy it or launch new, new instances and those will come pre-installed. So you're not gonna have to do anything about it. All right, so first stage is done. I'm gonna do the restart. That will close this terminal or this console. Then I need to open it again. And just need to fix the screen share because for some reason OBS doesn't know how to reattach to the right thing. So there we go. So that's what happens on reboot. I can see Windows booting up here and starting some stuff. We're gonna get into the first stage of the um, the user setup. That's gonna show up. Having having done that, I think last week, from what I remember, it's it asks you a few questions, then it reboots, <laughs> then it asks even more questions. Some of them being the same. It's still a bit clunky, but this is pre-release, so not not too surprising. It's also taking a surprisingly long time to get ready here. Yeah. All right. Oh, it's rebooting again. <laughs> okay, well, let's reattach to that. I, do, I did remember it rebooting a whole bunch of times, and because every time that happens, like the, uh, the, the, the visual console gets disconnected, it gets a bit annoying having to keep, keep reattaching to see what's up. Okay. That's new. There we go. So that looks like the the new installer. I'm not gonna configure anything too complex. Um, no, that's that's fine. Uh, one thing I noticed is that at some point it will ask what you should what you want to name the computer. If you change that, 
it actually reboots and then starts the installer process again with a new name. Uh, so if you want to make things slightly faster, don't just keep whatever random name. So doing the skip for now, right here, that actually saves you a bit of time. The other thing I noticed is if you do setup for personal use, you need to log in with a Microsoft account. But if you do uh, setup for uh, work or school, then you go there. And at that point, I believe it lets you, if you scroll down, you can say that you want sign in options. And then say you want to instead join a domain. There we go. Uh, domain name. Security question. So let's do this one is question one. Uh, I need to actually select one, right? Okay, fine. It's going to be my name of my pet, name of whatever city is going to be question two. And childhood's nickname is going to be question three. There we go. It, it always annoys me that they actually make those mandatory. Like, I, I understand that they can be useful, but really, making them mandatory is a bit much. Uh, then that's the page where you turn off everything because. Or you don't want to send too much data or have everything be customized on your that stuff. So turning all of that stuff off and then moving on. And now is the other unfortunate part where it actually looks for updates and updates as part of the initial setup process. There we go. So that's taking a tiny bit longer as it needs to actually download this thing and then unpack it and then reboot. So that's, and it feels like it's needlessly increasing the installation time to an extent. The upside being that once it's installed, uh, you you get into a user session that is not gonna immediately download updates and ask you to reboot. So not yet sure exactly how I feel about that. Like for, for this kind of demo, where I'm trying to actually record everything in one shot and then, and then publish it, it is a bit annoying because this is like needlessly extending the, <laughs> the length of this video, but I guess for an end user, it probably makes sense. It's also not unloading very fast for some reason. It's it's a bit unfortunate. Uh, anyway, while that's going on, we can probably just go look back at the LexD config a bit and just see what we actually ended up with. So I'll just zoom in this terminal and do a config show on Win11. So this is the actual LexD config uh, that resulted from all the stuff I did earlier. So you can see it's got a, it's got four CPU cores, it's got eight gigs of RAM. Um, so those were some of the, the overrides that were done earlier. It's got the ISO that Listro Builder converted for us earlier. So yeah, uh, it's the current boot priority. So that just saves you from having to go into the, um, the BIOS to just boot from the ISO. You, you can save yourself that. Um, then there is our VTPM here, which is going to be quite useful. Uh, that will make. I've actually seen that right now Windows 11 will install without a TPM. It's this particular build that Microsoft put on their website doesn't seem to actually care, but it's going to be a requirement down the line. Plus, having that TPM added means that you can enable things like BitLocker inside of uh, inside of the VM, and that works perfectly well. That's really it as far as the LexD config. There's really not a whole lot to it. Uh, LexD allocated a MAC address for it. We might actually have its IP listed. Yeah, so we've got some of its IP addresses and stuff uh, all listed here. So let's switch back to the installer and see what it's doing. All right, so the download has now completed and it's just doing the install. And it seems to be going reasonably quick. So it looks like in a, in a couple of minutes, we should be should be done with this. It's definitely also helping that the, the particular system I'm running this on is, is reasonably fast. Uh, so I've got, like I'm, I'm giving four vCPUs to the VM. I've got eight physical cores on the system and I've got 64 gigs of RAM. So giving eight gigs of RAM to Windows is no issue. Okay, preparing to restart. So it actually went even faster than I thought it would. And it's going to be restarting again. I actually lost track to the number of restarts. I think it did one after the install, then once again before it got to this stage. So that must be our third restart now, I believe. Um, so let me reattach to 
that's console and share it again. That's window, window 11 share. There we go. I don't remember if it reboots again after this one. It might. <laughs> but we're actually, we're actually getting there. Like almost at a desktop at this point. Which, you know, all in all is not too bad if, if I can actually prepare the ISO, set up LexD, do the install, get to a desktop, and hopefully enable BitLocker as well within like half an hour or so. That's pretty reasonable. Plus that gets you a, a full view of what the Windows 11 install process is like. It Like the Windows installer always felt kind of weird to me. I mean, I'm, I'm coming from a Linux background where our uh, we either have like full text installers that are very fast, very lightweight, but not very user friendly. Or we've got those live user sessions where they run the actual OS that's going to be installed and then have like a nice looking installer piece of software on there that copies it effectively across to the disk. Microsoft seems to be using like an installer that's I guess it's some well, it looks very much like whatever they had in Windows 7 or potentially even Vista and didn't really change since, uh, except for what it shows after that initial copy of the system and after that first reboot. That part looks kind of different on every version of Windows. But the initial one and the one that actually lets you like, you know, partition and select your some of your drivers and all of that kind of stuff is you know, looks very old to me. Hopefully this doesn't actually take a few minutes, just takes a few seconds, I'm hoping. Uh, more first boot configuration and, and whatnot. But we're almost there. I guess we can look at just how much, uh, how much CPU this thing is using, maybe. Let's see. So if I switch again back to my terminal here, um, yeah, and need to turn on the user space thread view to see it properly. Okay, so now we see Windows 11, Windows 11, Windows 11, Windows 11. So yeah, it's not too bad. I mean, on a system, like my overall CPU usage seems to be 20%-ish, not even, 15. So yeah, it's not trying to melt my entire computer, which is always good to see. Okay, let's exit from there and switch back to Windows, see where it gets. It's not giving a percentage thing. The message has changed a bit. Please keep your PC plugged almost there. Okay. Ah, uh, here we go, got the desktop. So that's Windows for you. Um, as I said, the first thing that you probably want to do is just updating the Vertigo drivers. The, the, the most important thing here being to get the... Okay, what am I supposed to do here? Okay, there we go, complete seven. Cool. Uh, I don't actually care about any of this. There we go. There are people, Vertigo win, yeah. Um, so that's the Vertigo drivers. You'd want to go there, do direct downloads, latest Vertio, and the Vertio ISO. The main benefit is that it's going to get you a driver that's actually capable of doing more than um, 800 by 600, because right now using a desktop the way it is right now is extremely frustrating. <laughs> so the new, uh, the new driver fixes that. It actually lets you go, I think, up to like ultra wide, like 2560 by 1080. Not that I would recommend it because it's not fully hardware accelerated, so it's still quite slow, but it's a lot better than the, the stock VGA driver that we're, we're dealing with right now. Uh, I'm going to run the 64 bit installer and just go next, all the drivers install. And that will go and update all the drivers and install anything that's missing. There we go. So that's immediately resized the window. Not sure what actually what resolution it's using right now. It's using something slightly too wide for my 
capture. Okay, yeah. Uh, move that back to 1024. That should fit just fine. Yep, we're good. All right, so we've got Windows 11. Could go around and whatnot, but there are much people that actually that really care about Windows have actually gone through uh, everything that's new and show that stuff. Um, the main thing I want to show here is Device Manager. When you open it with uh, with LexT, there are two devices that currently lack device drivers. One of them is for Vata UFS, the other one is VSOC. There are drivers that are in the works uh, on the um, Vata.io, the Windows, uh, the Windows Vata.io team is working on that. That will come eventually. But in this case, we can see there is a TPM2 module that's present and working. So that's that's that part that uh, we added to the, to the VM. And more importantly, we can do now manage BitLocker and turn it on. Uh, BitLocker, uh, oh, right. Keep forgetting that tiny detail. For some reason, BitLocker doesn't like it when you've got an IS, when you've got the install media still attached. Uh, let me check if ejecting it is enough, but I don't think it is. I think you need to actually go and. Uh, okay, what is close to by Explorer? That's weird. Um, okay, let's eject everything. Okay, all right, does, this, does it work now? Or does it actually want the media completely, completely gone? No, that worked, okay, neat. Um, so you can choose your recovery key, in this case I'm just gonna print it to PDF, because uh, it doesn't actually matter since it's a throwaway VM. So you can do next, new encryption mode, uh, no need for a test, and start the encryption. So it is now encrypting the, the disk with BitLocker. I thought there was some kind of progress information thing last time I did that. But I am not seeing it right now. Is this some... No, it's here. There we go. It's almost done already. So what happens there is that it's actually using BitLocker with the TPM to encrypt the, the, entire, the entire disk. On the LexD side, the TPM state, so the keys and everything in the TPM are included as part of the VM. So if you do a snapshot of the VM and then you restore it or something, that will also snapshot and restore the TPM state. So that should work just fine. You obviously don't want to go on the host file system and wipe the TPM state, otherwise you won't be able to boot into the VM without that recovery key. And that's it. Like we've got Windows 10, um, or Windows 11, sorry. It installed just fine. It's running just fine. It's got TPM support working correctly that we validated using BitLocker encryption in this case. And the device drivers are looking pretty solid too. Like the, everything is quite responsive. The install didn't take too long. Uh, went through this whole thing in less than half an hour from start to end. So yeah, that's a, that's a look at how you can run Windows VMs inside LexD, including the, the all new Windows 11 beta or development release. Hope that's useful to you. Um, have fun running LexD, LexD virtual machines and um, let me know if you've got any questions in the comments. Thanks. Bye.